Uh, we welcome everyone to this regular meeting on Monday, July 17th, 2023, at the Horse Canada ISD Board of Trustees. This is a regular meeting, and all items that will be discussed have been newly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it's not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby on the audience or guest form and follow the information on the speaker form. The board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budgets, make policy, and provide oversight. If you're not here to manage or solve individual problems, management is the responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and maintain a safe, secure environment, physically, mentally, emotionally, and academically. And these are our core values. We also appreciate your interest in the students of CISD. Okay. We have some discussion action items. Mr. Doring, modification of the Horse County High School schedule. Excuse me, Mr. President. I just want to make sure that they can hear us. So we have and they hear us out with the votes. Go ahead and start. Okay, great. Um, well, thank you for having me. Um, 
my name is Cody Harvey. I've been with Region 12 about four and a half years doing school finance. Um, and kind of tonight, I'd, I'd like to suggest like more of like a Q&A type thing because with the legislature still going on for the current year, for this coming biennium, there is still a little bit of fogginess to what's going to happen next year. Um, but the overall the way the school funding system works is, is still the same. Um, the way, the simplistic way of looking at the amount of revenue that Course Can ISD is essentially tied to the amount of kids that y'all have. So the amount of kids that y'all have is the level of funding you're going to receive. If you if you increase your amount of kids, then your funding's going to go up. But if you lose kids, then the funding will fall. That's kind of the 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 concept of it. Now, whether that be your local money or your state money. Those kind of counterbalance each other. So you're you're guaranteed a certain amount of funding, you know, based on the kids. And the way y'all are set up is y'all bring in about 22 million in MO taxes. The rest of the money that is required to educate those students comes from the state. So you can think of it kind of like a bucket, a bucket if you will. You have a bucket, and to fill that bucket, you have a portion of your local that you collect locally with your and the no tax rate that y'all set each year, then the rest is filled up with the state. Um, that'll be the same concept going into next year. Um, what we're hearing right now is that the MO tax rate will be lower. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to show you the uh, template I'm brought up. I think it'll be easier to kind of see it a little bit. So, for the 22-23 school year, this one right here, y'all ended with 5409.88. So that's not enrollment, that's average daily attendance. So um, I, I think after speaking with Brian, y'all were around like 91, 92% ADA. So each percentage point y'all can increase that by, that's just more funding for y'all. So. The more often kids come to school, it's more money for of course at Canada ISD. And about that is prior to COVID, our attendance was much better. We would hit 97, 98% every year. Um, COVID, of course, affected everything, and we did a we had a whole harmless um, during that. And our attendance has never gotten back up to those pre-COVID levels. Um, we have worked on it. We did everything that you know we're supposed to and more. But um, I think that's an interesting phenomenon just across the state. It's not just for Sakina districts. All the districts across the state are seeing the same kind of thing happening. Right, especially with our small rural schools that we have. I mean, we've always seen them historically at 97, 98. You know, even those schools are 94s, 93s. Um, and just like Dr. Frost mentioned, it, you know, since COVID, you know, it's just we don't see those attendance percentages anymore. You know, we work with about 100 schools all over the state of Texas. And it's the same thing everywhere. It's it's not, you know, locally here, it's it's throughout the state. And, you know, it, this year has been the first quote unquote normal year because the past two or three years we've had these whole harmlessness due to COVID and low attendance and everything else. So this is the first real year that we've had, you know, say real, uh, you know, in a couple years now. And, you know, hopefully those attendance percentages will go back up. Um, but I guess we'll have to kind of wait and see kind of what, what happens. Um, but until, you know, as, as the way it sits now, the state of Texas is, is funded on ADA. You know, there are some other states that are enrollment. We heard a little bit about that in legislature, legislators, and, um, but as of right now, it's still, you know, ADA. Um, I like this tab here because what I'm going to show you is So, so last year your local revenue for Corsa Can ISD was about 2.5 billion. Going into next year, the preliminary values we've gotten so far jump it by about a billion dollars. So, a couple things. Um, speaking with Bud Black, the chief appraiser, not to get too far into the weeds, but essentially y'all he need to get y'all's value in line to what the state thinks your values are. Um, He's required, is that not correct? So, <laughs> yeah, so every year, or every other year, the state will do a, what's called like a strategy study, 
and the local uh, appraisal districts will send in their what they think their values are. Then essentially the state will say, okay, well, this is what we think the values are. And if they're not within a 10% range, um, you get you get a couple years of grace, but then what happens is if you get out of that grace period and you get assigned state value, then the district is, is hurt. Uh, that's, you know, you've seen districts get hurt to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Well, but, Union is not in that situation. Right. We do have surrounding districts, however, that are yes. in that situation. Yes. Uh, so uh, I went to an appraisal district meeting a couple months ago that he was there. That's kind of what he was explaining is this increasing values is mostly due to trying to get Costa Canada and all the other districts in this county to where they need to be. Uh, because it's getting assigned state values. It doesn't hurt. Does not hurt the appraisal district financially? It doesn't hurt, you know, the taxpayer. The only person hurt is the school district. Um, so, the way this temple is built is on current law only. Um, so, going into next year, there's still a lot of stuff that we don't know yet. We've heard just last week Senate Bill 2 passed. Uh, the home state exemption has gone from 40000 to 100000 um, And the tax rate, they're saying about a 10.7 cent additional compression on top of what already is currently in law. So this year, y'all's no tax rate was 90670. So that's the amount that y'all bring in. Or that's the amount that y'all use as far as uh, multiplying that by the tax rate bringing in your maintenance and operating collections. And Based on current law only, based on the due to the growth from 2.4 to 3.4, it would drop you all down to 7746. So that's a heck of a compression just right there. And what we're hearing, and we don't have any methodology unfortunately yet to kind of to show what it would look like, but what we're hearing is another 10 cents on top of that. Another 10 to 11 cents is what we're what we're hearing based on what we've seen come out of the uh, come out of Austin. So. And these are just estimates, but y'all could be looking at going from 90670 all you know all the way down to 66 cents. So it all look like heroes, community at least, um, <laughs> lower the tax rate. Got to pay the bills though. Well, then that kind of goes back to that whole bucket concept. So y'all are going to well, technically, so your rates getting compressed quite a bit. So your rates, you know, we're just going to talk about current law because we know what we, this is what we know. So 90670 to 7746, you know, it's about uh, a pretty substantial compression as it is. This is what you collected last year in taxes. Can you all see that? I'm sorry. It's about 22 million. This is what we're calculating based on this new tax rate at this new value. Twenty-six and a half million. So still Except be that it could be another ten cents lower. Correct. Yeah. So it'd be lower than that. Correct. So, well, all that being said, the way the state formulas are set up is, with the compression, the state is going to hold you harmless. So with this, with the, as your rate gets compressed, and you're bringing in less locally, the state is there to fill up that bucket. So. What happens is the school district is held harmless. Again, your revenue is tied to this number right here. There's only two ways to increase your revenue. More kids, or if you go out and increase your tax rate, feel like a tax ratification election. Um, but, the, but since those are only two ways, whether it comes in through local or state, you know, that doesn't really matter. That's just one bucket dipping and in, in going into, in and out of the other. That's the way, it kinda, the way that kind of flows. Um, the good news going into next year, under the current law, there was some formulas that were written in that is going to increase the amount of taxes you receive on your on what's called your enrichment pennies. So y'all have what's y'all have five what we call enrichment or golden pennies. So your the state essentially assigns sets your rate for you on the MNO side. So the state's going to come in and say your rate is seventy two. Yeah, can you sure. say it louder? Sure. sure. <laughs> so, sorry, but this kind of gets into the little bit of the, the weeds. Um, but essentially, the under current law, going into next year, there was a funding mechanism where essentially you're getting more guaranteed funding from your 
basically your pennies, your your tax rate pennies. And I'm going to show it to you just in just a second. No, but what we're asking is sure. the state tells us what our MO tax rate will be, correct? Essentially, yes. Um, so there's a process in House Bill 3 that um, every year, and it's actually coming up actually next week, the appraisal district is going to send out certified values. So all we have right now is 3.4, that's preliminary. So we're going to get certified values on July 25th. And once we get those, we're going to go into a, a, a program called TEAL, a TA has. And we're going to upload those values. We're going to basically say, tell TA, this is what our value is for next year. They're going to calculate by compression. And they're going to basically set this rate right here, the 7246. So we don't get to just make determine that. our own, make up our okay. own. No, we don't have that option. That is so we do not have the option to choose our own tax rate. Did y'all hear him say that? I did hear him say okay. that. The state, the state chooses our tax rate for us. Essentially. Um, now, you, there is more local control as far as the pennies above. So y'all are, they set this, what's called a tier one tax rate, so 7246 is what they're going to, for this example, is what they're going to set. You have five, what's called right. golden pennies, if you add on top of that. Right. There are districts that have up to 1383, almost 14 cents, but those are those require going out for like a tax ratification election, right. going out and getting the voters right. and everything. Um, but essentially that is the process in House Bill 3. And it's, it's literally, we just go in, we say, Couple blanks. This is what the value is for this year. It's going to look at kind of historical trends, and it's going to plop out a compression essentially that's And the TA is going to have the stock official right then and there. But TA will then make that final. Uh, usually, it's pretty quick, but hopefully this year will. It's, it'll definitely be sometime probably you know early August. I hope that way we can get tax rates set by the end of August. Um, but no, I had someone ask it, actually asked me that today. It was uh, essentially the state sets our MO tax rate. So technically, yes, because there is no you can't you know since House Bill three you you pretty much take what they what they tell you it's going to be essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're not able to say no. We don't want to decrease to point seven seven four six zero. We want to stay at point nine zero six seven. We don't have that option. We have to do what the state tells us, correct? Essentially, um, we've heard of districts adopting, whether it be for innocent or guilty, the wrong tax rate. And TA has sent them out letters saying, essentially, you've adopted the wrong tax rate. Um, and, you know, luckily that's, you know, we haven't ran into too many of those. But uh, usually it's like the third or fourth decimal place or something, not, you know, to instead of, instead of 77, we're going to no, we're going to say 96, same thing. So that'll go after three, three or four guest from places afterwards. That's right. That tells you they're looking. They're looking plus. Yeah. Yes. So, um, so yes, ma'am. Uh, say to your uh, okay. okay, good. Please stop me at any point. It's easy for me to kind of get on a ramble up here because uh, I'm very passionate about this kind of stuff. So. Uh, we know. just have people in our community that sure. assume that we just make it up and right. that we're not governed on the tax rate that we can set. Sure. So we and, just want that. and TA will release publicly um, probably sometime in August the list of what's called their basically maximum compressed tax rate, this number right here. That's that's the number they're going to give us right here, this maximum compressed tax rate. They're going to release a list of every district in Texas of what it, what it needs to be. So that might be something useful where it's, it's going to come straight from uh, TA that says, you know, all 1,100 school districts are this rate, essentially. Because um, you know, everyone is, every district is going through the same tax and adoption process. There's no, <coughs> you know, there's not a, you know, there's not much local control there um, as far as that compressed tax rate. The um, INS, on the other hand, uh, there is more local control. Essentially, you're setting your INS rate based on working with your financial advisor, um, you know, what y'all need to make a bond payment for that year, and then, you know, if, if y'all have like a balloon payment or something coming up, you know, that's also something to, but all that to say is, m &O rate, not much local control, INS rate, you know, there is more. Um, um, once we get those 
those home values <coughs> that will help us to know what our own next needs to be, right? Okay. So on, so on the 25th, um, which is next Tuesday, um, we will, what, what we do is when we get those, we'll run an updated one of these uh, template, and essentially we're, we'll hopefully have your no rate uh, from TA, and also we can kind of look at the IMS rate, kind of see, um, you know, if, what kind of rate y'all we're looking at based on the amount of uh, growth that y'all have. Now, can you answer me this? Mm -hmm. um, yes, part of what came out, if I remember right, what came out of the state for the, you know, when the governor had a special session, they got changed. Is all this can change in two years? Mm -hmm. They left themselves a loophole in case the money's not there. Is that correct? So all this could be go right back to where we were if the money's not there. So you know, this year we going into the session, there was so much talk about there was such a such a huge surplus in the you know general revenue, all this money. Um, you know, we were really hoping for the school district's sake for um, more money to come to the state or to come to the schools um, through the basic allotment. Um, but as it as it as it went oh, as it went on, you know, vouchers kind of got brought up a lot, and then tax rate compression. So, um, you know, I'll say I'll have to say we were we were honestly hoping for more. Um, in two years, they can go back and look at it again. You know, every two years they meet, and they can, you know, who knows what you know two years going to look like from now? If there will be a surplus, and you know, we're, we're kind of go through this process again, but um, you know, it's hard to tell kind of what might be coming down the road in two years. But um, you know, we're hopeful. I mean, that's certainly something that we always want to see is more money for school districts, pay teachers more, and take care of the kids. Um, but. But all, all I have to say is, um, it's just it's hard to tell. Absolutely, it's, yeah. Going in, uh, you don't know how the economy in, in the state right. is going to be, right? Since we're all based on sales tax, right? And let's. It's, it's scrolled all the way to the right. Really? Yeah. You're in column A. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I wanted to show you just one thing. Kind of what I was talking about earlier about there is some funding mechanism built in going to next year that there is more money for the state or for the school districts. So we're going to kind of look at column D and E. So this is the most recent school year, 22, 23, and this is projected for next year based on current law. And all this here is tax collections and student information. What I want to show you though is the bottom dollar. So, just based on current law, the way it is right now, you are slated to earn, this is total local and state, uh, 53.5 million. Going next year, it's already increased to about, you know, almost another you know, million right there, just, just based on local under current law. Um, so there is a little bit more money coming. It's just, we'll have to wait and see It's about a, it's about eight hundred thousand increase from last year going to next year under current law. So uh, we are hearing more stuff that they're going to have another special session that goes back into like the voucher thing. But a hopeful part of that will also be maybe look at more avenues for increasing school funding. Uh, you know, I'll go for the term basic allotment, but that's one thing that we're hoping they're going to look at about increasing the basic allotment. Because uh, any increase in the basic allotment is just going to mean more money for schools. That's just, you know, all is directly tied to that. Um, so, we're hopeful for next year. Uh, you know, in my four and a half years, I don't remember it being this foggy going into, an, into the next school year at this point in the year. Uh, cause next, you know, starting next week, we're going to start looking at setting tax rates and we're still kind of waiting uh, from information from, the, from Austin, so. Which is scary for us to look at budgets and look at costs ahead. Sure. We were unsure of all of that. And, and, and we work with several junior ends, so we, we've had this, you know, we had to have a conversation with them, you know, 
two months ago about, about the same thing is, and you know, the only thing we kept going back to is budgeting under current law, and we're expecting there to be more money going into next year. That's what we've told all 100 and something districts who work with around the state. Um, but we just have to kind of. To be a scary year. I'm up. Yes. So I'm, 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 I'll take a life on my mentors. I'm uncomfortable with the amount of uncomfortableness going into next year. Um, <laughs> because, you know, we like to give you all the answers. I mean, we don't ever like to uh, put an asterisk on the information we give you all. Um, it's just unfortunate this time around. It's, everything got so mucked up with the vouchers and how we're going to spend this money that all the schools kind of almost felt like we kind of got left on the back burner a little bit. Um, so hopefully, hopefully this next special session of this call will, you know, bring schools back to the forefront and, you know, hopefully, uh, a little more funding. But, but I'm here to, any other questions you might have or anything about, about next year or going next year, I mean, I'm happy to answer any questions or... I'll leave, I'll leave a couple of my cards um, before I, you know, before I head out. And any questions come up later on or anything else, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Um, or I said we're happy to help, and you know anything we can do to make those life a little easier, we're, we're more than happy to do. We thank you. He's really, you're really good at explaining this. Right. Yeah. I, well, I tried. To, <coughs> well, I can't. I mentioned a couple of times going into the weeds. It is so easy. <coughs> kind of, there's like a hundred tabs on this template that. Just to end work, I try to kind of stick to just one, two, you know, I try to explain this to my wife, and she works in accounting, and she, I, I lose her in five minutes. <laughs> 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 I've had a few thoughts for the accountant, I know. <laughs> and, you know, and, you know, I, I went through accounting in college and everything, and nothing, nothing you learn in college, or I was an auditor before I came to Region 12, none of the, none of the things you learn has anything to do with school finance, whether on the revenue or the expenditure side. It's, um, so uh, I'm I'm happy to hear that. Hopefully, I'll be able to make it. You know, you know I've been told that school finance is foggy for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> it's the way everyone. Can. Well, and the the other thing that I'm seeing from what you said is, okay, so we've had the and we all are homeowners, so it's not like we don't all feel this. You know, our homes have increased tremendously, so we feel that as well. But even with this increase, when you look at those first two numbers of the 0.90 and the, oh, the, point, the tax rates, you know, you see this $4 million increase, but then when you get to the bottom line, you see it's only an increase of less than $700,000. So they're taking it away. Right. I mean, it's not like we've been given this huge amount of extra money because everybody's home value went up, or we have more homes, or we have more businesses. They're, they're taking away their portion. So that means that we're still not getting enough, in my mind, to do what we would like to do for our staff. You know what I mean? Like we are still forced to make some very serious and tough decisions because yeah. that money is not here just to give away. That we want to, you know. I mean, there's still very hard, hard, hard decisions, even with this small increase. The increase is not big compared to what my value and your value and your value. And your value. And, and I mean, we've, that's statewide too. It's everybody's values. I mean, I live in McLean County in Waco, and um, you know, just my just talking to everybody around the state, everyone's values have just exploded. I mean, they really have, and that kind of led to this increase to 100,000 home, homestead and decrease in tax rates by 10, 11 cents, all to you know try to get back to you know essentially low property taxes that people owe. But really, it doesn't help the school district at all because. Well, and no, and we, our vote, we have no control over the value of a home. None, zero, zero control over that. And I know that people think we have a lot of control over a tax rate, but clearly with HB3, we don't have any control over that. The state, the state does. In the 9S, the community voted for those. So those are not our choices. Yeah. It's indebtedness. It's indebtedness. So that was voted on by the community as well. So 
I look at this is that I don't have as much control in this area. My control is deciding how to best use what I look like I'm going to have in front of me. Right. But with increase in home valuations by almost a billion, I mean, a billion dollars, that should also lower our IMS rate. Too high. So you can't, there's, you certainly can't. Um, I've heard different claims from districts because everyone's values going up, so we, we have the same kind of IS discussion with a lot of districts is as a as you all have to decide if do we want to lower it or do we want to a lot of districts have kept it the same. That way if the values go down next year you're not having to increase the rate back up. That's kind of the again it's kind of like a political game where instead of kind of bouncing back and forth every year depending on what the values are, if you just if some districts choose to just keep it stagnant. And if you look historically we've been able to make some good financial decisions because we've been able to pay off some things early, right. refinance for lower interest right. rates, right. and so we've been able to do some really good things just because of our right. so. And you know, across the state, and, and I'm one of those people that just fights for public education all the time, but what we see with districts that do have uh, a lot of business industry, their fast growth, the state takes their money. So if it's being in Chapter 41 or being in a Chapter 42 district, um, we just need additional funds to for public education across the board in Texas. We need to raise the amount of money that we get for each one of our kids so that we can do the things we need to do. And that kind of goes back to the basic allotment thing that I kind of mentioned earlier. Um, House Bill 3 said the basic allotment at 6,160. 6, <coughs> this time kind of goes going across here. <coughs> There's been people that have mocked it up and everything based on inflation where they think that number should be around like 7,000 per kid. And that was, we, we kind of heard that going into the session. And we were, you know, very hopeful, very, you know, we were, you know happy about, you know, the amount of extra funding still that you could get. But as the session went on, we just, more and more was about vouchers and property tax relief. And it, it just, it just kind of, Fell through a hole. I don't know what else to say from from my from what we saw, and you know there there's been talks about going into the special session again. Maybe basic allotment will be, will be brought up, but you know if to kind of go to your point to get more money per kid, basic allotment would be one of the easier ways to do it. Just increase that number, then you get more money per suit. and you know, it, that that's that's kind of what we were hoping for, but. Um, unfortunately, uh, kind of, kind of fell off the cracks a little bit this time around. Does anyone have any other questions? Okay. Yes. Thank, thank, thank you very much for coming. I mean, you answered a lot of questions for us. Anytime. It's a, it's a pleasure to do it. And like I said, any other questions come up? I'll stay. Uh, you know, if any other questions come up, or the big of it is, I'll be glad to answer anything else. Thank you. Thank you.
Code Section 551.01. Thank you.